Well, hey everyone. As you can see, we're in a different season now. We're revisiting the log cabin. Um, that first video that I produced about this log cabin, I kind of did it in kind of a hurry, and it was really more of an afterthought. And there really got, there really has been a lot of traffic on that video, and there really has been a lot of you that have asked a lot of questions that just didn't get answered the first time I filmed that. I kind of did a quick overview of the cabin, kind of showed you um, just real fast kind of what we did. And um, in that first video I went over, you know, when we made it and, and who I made it with, and you can visit that first video to find that stuff out. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what I want to do today is just kind of go over some of the questions that were answered or asked, excuse me, about the cabin and explain in more detail some of the features of the cabin. Okay, so one of the questions that was asked a lot was kind of how we did the corners and how we um, joined the logs together in the corners. And so um, in the first video I explained it was just a simple button pass. And that's really all it is. Um, the logs we used were just six to eight inch logs that generally aren't used for lumber. And so they're usually waste. And, and that's generally what this cabin is made out of. And as you can see, what we did by this flat spot, these logs were six to eight inch logs. And uh, my neighbor milled these with a flat face on each side. That way we could stack them and they could stack nice and even and flat. Um, and what we did is, is this log goes past the corner and then this log comes in and butts in. And it's just a button pass. So we notched out this corner and I'll show that in more detail in just a second. And then this log just goes into the notch. And basically you use rebar and pin the rebar on this log going down into this log because this log is the one that can swing this way. This log butts into this notch so it cannot move. And this log can swing this way so you pin this log with rebar. And then on this course it's the opposite. This log is going past. This log comes in and butts into the notch. And so you pin this log with a piece of rebar so it can't move. And this log can't move because it's in the notch. And you just alternate back and forth all the way up the corner. What I also did is I took my Excalibur disc that I used. Some of you may have seen me use that when I'm working on the timber frame when I um, did the dovetail or the lamb's tongue, excuse me, for the floor joists on the timber frame. Be sure and check that video out. I'll give you a link right there. But I used that same tool to round off the top of these logs because these were flat just like the bottom. And I used that to round off the top so water would shit. So, just a pretty simple button pass corner, and uh, pretty easy. You know, anybody can do it. So here's a more detailed look of what that corner looks like. So this log is the pass corner, the pass log, excuse me, and this log is the butt. And so you can see the notch right here. This is where we chinked that seam, but the notch ends right here. And so this log butts right into that notch. Um, and so this log is pinned and this log can't go anywhere because it's locked in by this notch. Another question I got a lot from viewers is what do we use for chinking? So the chinking product that we used is a commercial chinking product that you can get online. Um, the particular brand we used I think was Permachink is what we used. And the chinking process was not too difficult. There's a little bit of a learning curve with it. There's a few specialty chinking tools that you need. They're just kind of little specially shaped spatulas. And the chinking product just comes in a five gallon bucket and depends on the gap between the logs, whether or not you have to back the log, um, back the gap with, with backer rod. Um, I am by no means an expert at log home building, and I'm sure there's some log home builders out there that, that are um, getting ready to, to tell me what I'm doing wrong in this explanation. Basically the chinking we used was a commercial grade chinking product. We backed some joints, didn't have to back other joints, and 
Um, learning how to chink is a whole another topic um, that you can do an entire video on. And so we won't go over that in this one, but basically that's what we used as a commercial grade chinking product. The stain that we used is also a commercial grade stain that we use for log homes and that was also by the same company. And as you can see, it's getting time to uh, do another reapplication of it. Um, but so far it's lasted about six years to seven years and so we're pretty happy with the performance of it so far. Um, some would say not to put a stain on it because then that's maintenance, but we want to make sure that we did our best to protect the logs so it'll last for a long time. Another question I got a lot was how we set it on rocks for the foundation. And basically you can see, um, it's a little bit dark in the shadows, but the porch, the, lo the bottom log on the cabin runs long and it's incorporated into the porch. So this is just one big old long log and it runs out and it sits on top of a rock and the rest of the the rest of the cabin is sitting on rocks as well um, somebody asked if we have a lot of problem with critters underneath the cabin and we haven't really had any problems with that so far but you can see that we're just sitting on rocks and that's all this needs this whole cabin is just floating and um, as long as the corners are pinned together like I explained earlier, um, then the whole thing will kind of move with frost and thaw and sitting on the ground on rocks is just fine. One of the questions I got a lot were from a lot of viewers is what kind of windows we used and we basically just used run-of-the-mill pine windows that you can get at any big box store for a shed or, a, or for a barn. Single pane windows, this building is not a heated cabin. Um, per se. It's not a live-in cabin, it's just a vacation cabin or, or a place we come for weekends. And so even in the winter time when we're running the wood stove and it's cold out like today, these windows do fine. Um, they're a little dirty right now, but um, pretty simple, uh, pretty cheap. Make sure you cover them with a waterproof coating of some sort and they'll do just fine. Another question I got was at night if you use them for ventilation, how do you keep out the bugs? What I did there was, I just basically manufactured a simple pine frame with an aluminum screen on it. And then at night, I rigged up some fasteners so they hook into the hooks at night and they just simply fit in the window opening, just like so. And then you can lock them in. Works pretty good. Keep out the mosquitoes. So you don't really have to spend a ton of money on windows. After all, it is a simple pine cabin. Another question a lot of people ask me, what exactly did I do for a door? And I kind of explained that in the other video a little bit, but all I did is I went and got a plane six panel raised panel pine door um, solid wood door finished it I had to create the opening in the cabin um, and create the door frame and manufacture that to fit the door in um, and the threshold the side bucks on this on the door frame this is just the trim board but the inside panel um, and the side pieces for the door frame are installed with vertical grooves and so there's basically a, a large leg screw that screws into the logs and there's a there's a large vertical groove in that piece that's behind this piece and that allows for the log cabin to shrink and it won't affect the door frame and then on top of those uh, the, the rough opening pieces for the door frame you put these trim pieces on on the outside to seal it up and that covers up those notches. And when I first installed this top header piece, this is affixed to a board that's affixed to this top log here. So it, it's a slip joint. And this was about a quarter to three eighths of an inch above this piece. So this has settled almost a half to 
maybe even three quarters of an inch since we put it in. And if I wouldn't have made those slip joints like that and made this a slip joint, it would have bound on the door frame and it would have made it so it didn't open. So that's how we did that. Another question I got a lot from a lot of viewers was how big the overhangs were. And on this building, we used three foot overhangs. We just ran the purlins long, as you can see. And then we just decked the roof and just decked it just like we did the rest of the roof on the whole cabin. And that provided us with some very large overhangs to help protect the logs in the long run. And, you know, I don't know if that's totally necessary, but it seemed like it was a pretty good, uh, a pretty good plan for us. And it's worked out pretty well. It actually does provide quite a bit of protection for the building. Another question that a lot of people asked was what do we do for the ceiling? And as you can see, we used uh, three purlins that go across the length of the cabin. The cabin is a 12 by 14 cabin. And so these six to eight inch logs for purlins is plenty. And then we use blue stained pine on the ceiling. Um, it was pretty green when we milled it. So you can see it shrunk quite a bit, plus it's winter time. So the gaps are pretty large in that roof right now. In the summertime, when the humidity is higher, they swell up and the gaps aren't quite so large. But underneath the steel roofing, we put felt paper so there's no leaks and it keeps out the weather. And so that's what we did. We just used blue stained pine for the ceilings running vertically from uh, the bottom of the peak to the top. And uh, it turned out pretty nice. Another viewer kind of wanted to see exactly what we use for a wood stove and this is just an old wood stove that came out of somebody's house um, and it's a little rusty and it's a little beat up but that kind of goes with the theme of the cabin this wood stove obviously is plenty large for this space and it can bake you out of here when you get it cooking um, but it was free and so if you build your own log cabin like this, try and find an old wood stove from someone that might be inexpensive or even free, and anything will work. And the cabin, of course, does not have any power. And so we had some good suggestions from some viewers on whether or not to use solar power or solar panels. And those are all great suggestions for us. We kind of like to get away from things and get away from... I guess electricity, so we kind of like just using kerosene lanterns at night. And there's one by each window, and there's one for the table. And uh, once you get them lit and adjust the flame on them, they work pretty good and it lights it up here pretty well actually. Well, there's the cabin revisited. Hope we explained a few things you guys had questions about. Um, hopefully you got a little better look at it this time and, and got to see a little bit better on how we actually built it. And hopefully some of the explanations I gave you will give you some insight on how to build a cabin like this for yourself. When we built this cabin, we had never done a cabin like this before. Um, and we just kind of winged it. And so it's a really simple design. It's held up very well over the past 10 years. And I suspect it'll be here for another 75 years, easily as long as we take care of the logs on the outside. And this really proves that anybody can do a little cabin like this as long as you can access some smaller logs um, and have access to a sawmill. You could even use a chainsaw sawmill to mill the top and bottom faces of the logs to stack them. All we really used for tools to build this was a few power tools and a chainsaw. And it was a great experience and we had a lot of fun. And so I hope this gives some of you guys some inspiration to build a little log cabin like this, a little 12 by 14 log cabin take you a summer and you'll have a great little place to come visit for many many decades to come so as always thanks a lot for tuning in I really appreciate it um, we're still working on the rafters for the timber frame 
Um, cutting those, I'll be cutting a few more of those today actually. Um, so be sure and tune in for that coming up and uh, we'll see you guys next time.